Hi guys, welcome to Water and Inorganic Ions. So, to be honest, for Water and Inorganic Ions, you just need to know those uh, five points from the AQA specification. There is not much to add to it. This is what the questions are asking for. So, they are mainly asking you to list the properties of water or select few of those to explain why, for example, um, water is a, a good uh, is good for condensation and hydrolysis reaction and so on so structure of the water so a water molecule is one atom of uh, is made of one atom of oxygen joined to two atoms of hydrogen by shared electrons and because the shared negative hydrogen electrons are pulled towards the oxygen atom the other side of each hydrogen atom is left with a slight positive charge the unshared negative electrons on the oxygen atom give it a slight negative charge and this makes water a polar molecule. So it has a partial a negative charge on one side and a partial positive charge on the other side. So uh, the slightly negative charge oxygen atoms attract the slightly positive charge oxygen, uh, hydrogen atom of other water molecule. And this attraction is called hydrogen bonding, and it gives water some uh, its uh, useful properties. So, uh, what is a metabolite? So, in lots of metabolic reactions, uh, including uh, condensation or hydrolysis reaction, we will see water. So, water is a solvent. What does that mean? Uh, this means uh, that some substances can dissolve in it. So most metabolic reactions will take place in solutions, uh, for example, in the cytoplasm of eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells, so water is essential. And this is because water is polar. The positive end of a water molecule will be attracted to the negative ion, and the negative end of a water molecule will be attracted to the positive ion. So this means the ions will get totally surrounded by water molecule. They will dissolve, so water's polarity makes it a useful solvent. So water can buffer, resist changes in temperature. The hydrogen bonds between water molecules can absorb a lot of energy. So water has a high specific heat capacity. It takes a lot of energy to heat it up. And this is useful for living organisms because it means that water does not experience rapid temperature changes. So it's a good habitat and maintain constant body temperature. Right. And um, water has a large latent heat of vap uh, vap uh, vaporization. So uh, it takes a lot of energy to break the hydrogen bonds between water molecules. So water has a high, and here I would suggest you put the word actually large, because that's as per specification. <coughs> Latent of uh, vaporization and a high specific heat capacity, so a lot of energy is used up when water evaporates. And this is useful for living organisms because it means they can use water loss through evaporation to cool down without losing too much water. And water molecule is very cohesive, so they can stick together, which helps water transport in plants and in other organisms. So strong cohesion, for example, helps water to flow, making it great for transporting substances and means that water has a high surface tension when it comes into contact with air. Then inorganic ions. So they occur in solution in the cytoplasm and body fluids of organisms, some in high concentrations and others in really low concentrations. So each of the ions has a specific role, depends on the properties of those. So, uh, in terms of the specification, there are many ions that you could be talking about. So, for example, hydrogen ions and pH, iron ions as a component of hemoglobin, sodium ions in the core transport of glucose and amino acids, and phosphate ions as component of DNA and ATP. 
So a few questions here to give the properties of water that are important in the cytoplasm of cells. So what we've got here, linking again, properties, so what? So what's the importance? So polar molecules, so acts as a solvent, solvent, okay, uh, so reactions that can take place faster in solutions, it's reactive, so uh, the hydrolysis condensation can take place, right? And compare and contrast the processes by which water and inorganic ions enter cells. So if you're comparing, both move down the concentration gradient, uh, both move through protein channels in a uh, membrane. Where is that coming from? For example, when you learn about um, osmoregulation in section 8, you will uh, look at aquaporins in the collecting ducts. So those are porins that uh, allow uh, further reabsorption of water. On the contrast, so ions um, can move against the concentration gradient by active transport, but water, obviously, it's not going to be moved by the active transport. So here we've got to describe and explain the link between oxygen concentration, a rate of respiration, and the rate of uptake of potassium ions, okay? So we got here the percentage of the concentration, which obviously it's increasing that way. Uh, same in here, okay, and in that. So what we've got in here, the greater rate of oxygen consumption leads to higher respiration and higher uptake of uh, potassium ions, okay? So we're looking at the pattern in the table to see what's happening and why this is important. Obviously, oxygen is required for respiration and re uh, respiration produces ATP. And then potassium ions can take up, uh, be, be, will be taken up by active transport. Obviously, we need ATP for this against the concentration gradient. Right, so that's everything for uh, water and inorganic ions. See you later.